CitizenCon has been and gone. We've had loads of information. Some would say too much information, but I did some predictions beforehand, so I thought it'd be good to go through some thoughts after the event. So let's get into it. So first up, planetary pyro planets, but basically just planets. I was hoping in this section, in this panel, for more content, uh, outposts, things to do, but it really was just a pure look at the planets and the tech and the artwork, and we, all of which are amazing and they look incredible, but as we know, this game has got all the art, art for days and days and days, it doesn't need more artwork, it needs things to do on those planets, and there's just no talk of that whatsoever, no talk of yeah outposts or things to do or even any looks at kind of things like caves or anything on the planets it literally just we've got planets they look beautiful we'll see my suspicion is with the whole of this uh this video is that everything we see is is unfortunately further off off than we thought it was because there's a lot of talk about things for the future we'll get to the end to the incredible squadron 42 uh mammoth talk it wasn't really about squadron 42 but I've got some really interesting thoughts on that, so we'll get to that. But yeah, the planets, the pyro stuff, it, on one hand, they look incredible and some of the best looking stuff that CRG has done. On the other hand, they're just, they are a blank canvas for us to play on and where is the stuff to play with? That's, that's really my thoughts on the planets. Next up, we have the investigation stuff. Again, this seems... Like it's quite a long way off. They're talking about really early kind of demos of this that they're doing internally to pitch them almost as ideas. Um, and so I'm not too excited about that. I, I think my concern with anything like this, any of the mission stuff, is that how replayable is it? And, and do I see myself replaying into investigation missions over and over again? Probably not. But uh, big shout out to Luke and Elliot, who as far as I can tell, are the only two people creating uh, gameplay and content for the persistent universe <laughs> whenever something has come out they seem to be the people doing it so we've basically got two people as far as i can tell creating things for us to do at the moment but i'm sure that's not true but they're the only ones who want to get on camera that was fine the underground facility similar just all concept art and so even the white box stuff at the end you're just like this is miles off isn't it there's no sense that that's coming in the next year maybe maybe a year if we're lucky but that looks quite a long way off does look great and uh, really stretches the scale of the facilities at the moment the faci underground facilities feel like just a small thing whereas these new the artwork at least suggests this will be a major uh, well major location basically each one of them will be a significant place but again what gameplay will be in there there was a lot of talk from Ian Leyland who is the art director about gameplay maybe we could do this or maybe the gameplay could be this that is not a good sign because again that means we're miles off actually getting into the hands of gameplay designers so there we go let's talk about the need for multiple speeds panel this seems like a good change to me they're basically changing the way that we fight and fly at high speeds and they're bringing all the combat to under 200 meters per second and then quantum travel everything else will be in a different mode and and for me that sounds like a good thing i think we'll have to see how it plays out but yeah again that's good but when are we going to get that they said that that's quite easy to tune for squadron 42 because there's only a few ships but when we actually would get that in the pu i think that's quite a way off as well lawville I have to say, I was a bit disappointed by this because my understanding was that it was a complete rework of the city. What they actually showed was really just a, a load of set dressing. So you can fly around, yes, and that's really cool. But the major thing that they've added is all the, the, the high buildings and they've added visuals to the outskirts of the city. And they didn't really show anything from the cities in the actual way you walk around in the city itself. And what they did show was just what we have now but with these nice backdrops or these nice buildings so i yeah i don't know it, it again it, it looks nice and it will be fun to fly through the the buildings but i was thinking that they were going to rework the city itself and it doesn't seem like that's what they're doing so that one was a bit disappointing for me the power play stuff all of the resource management stuff oxygen uh 
atmosphere, all that sort of thing. Again, a very cool panel. Again, really early stuff. Obviously, to get to this stage takes quite a lot of engineering work where they can do these kind of in-engine mock-ups and they can show us things. But that actually getting to us in-game is, is a long way off. And, and I guess as well, that will be part of Squadron 42. So it suggests that, yeah, again, Squadron 42 has got a lot of work. And again, we'll come on to that in a minute. But yeah, it was good stuff and all stuff that we're excited about for the future of the game. But there's no way that we're getting any of that stuff in the near future. Um, it's, yeah, or at least if we get something, it's going to be a really very basic implementation of it. But again, there's a theme here. A lot of stuff is really cool, but a lot of stuff that seems like it's not very close at all. The ships, normally I don't get excited about ships really at all. I only own, having backed the game in like 2013, I only own uh, an arrow and a Cutlass Black. So ships don't really do much for me normally, but the Spirit looks very cool. And yeah, if I, if I had an idea of when it was coming, I may well upgrade my Cutlass Black to the Spirit. Um, still wouldn't cost that much money just to do the upgrade I'm not going to be buying it outright but it looks really cool uh, I think the cargo variant would be the one I'd go for but I like the look of it and I may well actually buy or upgrade to that one again the Corsair look cool and all the buggy stuff is fine not interested by that really but CIG do ships and they do them well we shouldn't be surprised by that let's move on and then finally we came on to a surprise panel from Chris and Richard Tyra talking about the work that they're doing for Squadron 42 that will eventually make its way to the Persistent Universe. Uh, it wasn't really about the Squadron 42 itself, so in my predictions I thought maybe we'll get some sort of teaser. That wasn't what this was. This was uh, quite an interesting reality check, I think, for us in terms of where Squadron 42 is at. Um, my guess is that the whole move from Rich Tyra to basically taking over Squadron 42, I think at this stage, last year, whenever it happened, they must have thought, we've got a game here that isn't very good. <laughs> we know that CIG have nailed the visuals, and actually there's been a um, there's been a leak that you may well have seen from some Squadron 42 kind of teaser footage. Um, and as we know, CIG are incredible at graphics, and they can do that which is kind of the way, the backwards way round, or the wrong way round that game development normally works. If you saw any of the GTA 6 leaks, there was all this hoo-ha, like, why does it look so terrible? But what they were working on, they were working on the gameplay, they were working on the mechanics, uh, they were working on animation, all those sorts of things. And what we seem to have with CRG is that they've done it, not probably intentionally, but we've got this situation where we've got these incredible graphics probably for Squadron 42 that we, we can, you can search on YouTube and find. But the, the core mechanics of the game, of the movement of the character and, and of the flying of the ships, two main things, they are, they're nowhere near finished. Absolutely nowhere near. And you would, as I say, you'd think that in the 10 years of development, the thing they would have nailed by now would have been, how does the character traverse? How does he move? How does he interact with the environment? And how do ships fly? And how do we fight? But they've gone back to the drawing board on basically all of that. So... That is a problem, I think. You have to say that they must have restarted. They must have just got to the point where Richard Tyra came across. He seems to be taking a major role in terms of leading the direction of a lot of these features. They, he must, must have just come in and said, this is rubbish, this isn't any good. And so he is then, or as the team, they've decided to rework all of it. Now, what they're showing looks looks good. The EVA stuff, I guess, it looks good and it's going in the right direction. All the ship combat stuff that they're talking about, they are talking about as developers that it's it's good and it's the right direction. But yeah, I, I mean, what have they been doing for 10 years? I, I say this as a, as a very patient uh, backer who I don't normally get too annoyed at anything. It's just a game after all. And uh, yeah, I just don't get too cross about anything. But it just seems as though we know. We, I do know that that development for games is iterative. That the, you you do a version of traversal, and then a few years later you might improve on that. But it seems as though they've just gone back to the drawing board on a lot of things to try and get this game in order. There is though a positive to this. I think if you were ever around 
when the Wii U was released. <laughs> Here's a tangent. The Wii U was released by Nintendo and Nintendo really struggled to get games out for the Wii U for a while. The reason they gave for this, they were interviewed and gave various things, they underestimated the amount of people that it took to make HD games and obviously the Wii U isn't really like a powerhouse of a games console but they transitioned from standard definition or low resolution artwork with the Wii up to in theory HD with the Wii U. There are assets, the environments, everything had to look much better and had to have a lot more work and they said that it basically took double the amount of people. So normally in game development the bit where you do the graphics can be really hard and working on really high-end uh, graphics can take ages as we've seen with a load of games around. To get games like Cyberpunk out uh, took ages and a lot of that would have been putting these massive environments together. But CIG have basically done all of that work already. They've put the massive environments together. They've, they've basically nailed the graphics, they've nailed the artwork, the tech to get their planets together. And so basically, I imagine when they're playing through their current builds of Squadron 42, it looks incredible and it plays like rubbish. <laughs> but the good news might be that actually it might be quicker for them to fix the gameplay than it would be to fix the graphics, if that makes any sense. Because yeah, it can just take ages to get graphics scaled up and looking really good. Whereas in theory, they look like they're making progress on the gameplay stuff. There we go, there's some thoughts on that. I I was a bit shocked by some of this stuff that Chris and Richard were talking about. It just seems like if they'd done that panel, if they talked about those things five years ago, you would have been okay. But to do it 10 years in when they're really doing some basic, the traversal stuff seems like that should really have happened a long time ago. But there we go. There was, good, there was some good stuff in there. I think the Moby Glass looks great. I think the the kind of interaction system they're moving away from just holding F and having to look around with the mouse but being able to just look at things and pick them up looks good radar fine whatever talk about skills as well in this point I think it, there's going to be some trade-offs in this game um, I think what seems to be happening is in order to get people to take death of the death of a, a spaceman seriously and to stop just backspacing there's going to be have to be some reasons other than just money why you don't want to lose your character and i think having a built up technique or skill where that character is quite good at a certain thing i think that's that is a trade off that is is kind of the opposite of what they always talked about in this game there wouldn't be any kind of points or things that you do like this where you skill up your character but i'm not too unhappy about that but there we go a lot of thoughts i would love to hear your thoughts in the comments just in general about the citizen con and just about all the different topics it was on one hand a good one a good start a good citizen con i'd say uh, there was some really interesting stuff in there but i come out of it feeling like both games squadron 42 and star citizen are further away than i wanted them to be when I went into CitizenCon. I feel like the stuff that they've showed, all the pirate stuff, all of the gameplay for the Persistent Universe is quite a way off. And I feel like Squadron 42 has still got quite a way to go from what they're showing and what they're talking about. Maybe I'm being pessimistic. Tell me in the comments what you think. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're not. And I'll see you soon. Bye.